uh, welcome to this lecture. In the last lecture, we are discussing about the combinatorial testing and as the first testing technique, the combinatorial testing, we are discussing about the decision table based testing. We had uh, said that if there is a function whose output depends on different types of conditions, then we can represent the values of the conditional inputs and the corresponding actions in the form of a decision table and every column in the decision table become a test case and that we call as a rule. So, just to refresh what we are discussing last time, we can represent the outcome of different conditions. or the values of different condi uh, the conditions and the corresponding actions, let us say have three actions and sometime depending on the values of the condition, the action may take place or does not take place. This forms our decision table and each of the rule will become a test case and for some of the values of the conditions, we have written do not care. So, in that case irrespective of the condition 2 value, the rule 2 will result in this action. Now, let us do some example problems, first we start with something very simple, again we take the problem of a function which takes three parameters a, b, c representing the sides of a triangle. Determine triangle type and we have uh, three parameters side 1, side 2 and side 3 these are the three parameters for the determined triangle function and then depending on the specific values of the three sides, it can display not a triangle, scalene, isosceles, equilateral, right angled etcetera. Now, the conditions here are that uh, ABC form a triangle or C 2 is A equal to B, C 3 is A equal to C, C 4 is B equal to C. Okay, the parameters uh, let me just uh, rewrite them as A B C that may be easier to understand in this context. So, the parameters are A B C, these are the three sides A equal to B, A equal to C, B equal to C these are the three conditions and the parameters. And now, we represent the, it in a decision table form. If C 1 is uh, 0, that is it uh, does not form a triangle, then we have A 1. Now, if it forms a triangle and then C 2, C 3, C 1 are 1, then it is equilateral, all sides are equal and similarly, we just keep on filling this and then each column we make a test case. So, that is the essential idea behind the decision table testing. Whenever we see that some relation between the input parameter help define the output parameter we write that in the form of conditions and those conditions we represent here all possible values of conditions and then we note the corresponding actions and then these form our test cases. And we can write the specific values for the parameter a, b, c for which uh, 
the columns that define the test case. For example, A is not equal to B, B is not equal to C and C is not equal to A, which is not okay. Uh, not a triangle, we can take 4, 1, 2 as the specific values here and so on. But this is a more complete decision table because earlier we had one of the condition is uh, not a triangle, but what are the conditions which define not a triangle? The conditions are if either if none of these are true, then this becomes not a triangle. If either of these becomes true, that A is uh, greater than B plus C or B greater than A plus C and so on, then it is not a triangle. And we represent the C 1, C 2, C 3, which help us to form a more concrete decision table and this will become easier to translate into test cases. If any of this is false, C 1, C 2, C 3, the corresponding we just write a not a triangle. So, compared to our previous decision table, this is a more complete decision table, because it helps us to easily define the test cases. And based on that decision table, we can form the test cases, we can give the values and then what is the expected output, we write and it, it each of these is a for test case and we get 11 test cases. Now, let us take another decision table example. Let us say the function is printer troubleshooting. We give some input to the function, those are the conditions. For example, if the printer does not print red light is flashing and printer unrecognized. Based on the logical combinations of these input, the output is defined. For example, if the printer does not print red light is flashing and printer is unrecognized, then the output will be check the printer computer cable, ensure printer software is installed and check or replace the ink. But if the printer does not print and the red light is flashing, then will display that uh, check and replace ink or check for the paper jam and so on. For every combination of the input parameter, we write the corresponding actions. and this forms the decision table for the printer troubleshooting. And then once we develop this decision table, each of this row, sorry, each of the column in the decision table forms a test case. Now, based on our understanding of the decision table, let us try to solve a very simple problem. Let us say, so certain airline provides in-flight services that is food. Free meals are served, if the flight is more than half full and the ticket cost is more than 3000. If the flight is more than half full and ticket cost is more than 3000, free meals are served unless it is a domestic flight. If it is a domestic flight, then meals will not be served and the meals are charged on all domestic flight. So, how do we develop the decision table for this? If we look at the conditions, the conditions are whether more than half full
it is a domestic or international flight and ticket cost greater than 3000 these are the three conditions and the action is free meal served or not. Now, we can form all possible combinations of these more than half full yes, domestic yes, ticket cost 3000 yes, free meal no, more than half full yes, domestic yes, ticket cost greater than 3000 no and in that case free meal is no, more than half full no domestic no ticket cost greater than 3000 no and then no free meal is solved. But what about more than half field is yes, domestic is no, ticket cost is greater than 3000 then it becomes yes and so on. So, we can develop the set of test cases for this by looking at the rows, but how do we optimize the number of test cases? Let us look at that. So, we can identify the three conditions more than half full, more than 3000 per seat and the domestic flight and then the action is free meal served or charged. First is we form all possible combinations each one has uh, two values yes and no. So, 2 to the power 3 we will need 8 of them here. So, we can represent now the corresponding actions as long as it is a uh, more than half full meals are served and if it is a international flight it is not a domestic flight then it is a free meal. But one thing we can observe here is that if we represent it in the form of a decision table and we look at the actions for these both these rules the action is same and the only difference between the conditions here is that this is no and this is y. So, we can combine these two we can combine these two and we can write do not care for this. Similarly, for these two they are the rules are similar I mean the conditions are similar excepting that these two are different, rest are similar and also the action is the same and therefore, we can combine these two and write do not care for this. And similarly, you can combine these two because they differ only with respect to more than 3000 per seat but the action is the same the serve meals. Now, based on this idea we can combine this and form a decision table which is more compact number of rules are less we have used the do not care here and therefore, the number of test cases is reduced to 4. Now, let us see some assumptions uh, made regarding the rules. One is that when we form the decision table all possible combinations of the conditions are represented that is how we must develop the decision table. 
so that we do not miss out on specific combinations. And one thing we must guard against is that for the same combination of conditions, same values of the conditions, we cannot have two different columns and have two different actions taken taking place that will be a contradictory thing. So, we should guard against this while developing a decision table. The problems for which the decision table based testing is applicable is that from the function it appears that there is lot of decision making if then else kind of thing happens. The output is a logical relation among inputs or there is a calculation involving subset of input va variables or there is a cause and effect relation between input and output or the computation logic is complex. In all these cases we need to develop the decision table, but one thing we must understand that developing the decision table when the number of conditions is large becomes very cumbersome can make mistakes. So, for small problems involving few conditions decision table is uh, very helpful to design the test cases. Now, let us do a small quiz to design the decision table based testing. Let us say a customer on a e-commerce site gets the following discount. A member of the site gets 10 percent discount for purchases lower than 2000, he is not a member he gets Okay, he, he, if the purchase is more than 2000 gets 15 percent discount. Purchase using the SBI card fetches 5 percent discount. If the purchase amount after all discount exceeds 2000 then shipping is free. How do we design the decision table for this? The first step is to identify the conditions. The first condition is that is the customer a member. The second condition is that the purchase amount greater than 2000 or not. The third condition is that whether SBI card is used or not. and then purchase amount after discount. So, these are the four conditions and then we can develop the decision table here. Member is no and let us say purchase using yes. Uh, uh, greater than 2000 yes, SBI card yes and total amount after discount is greater than 2000 yes, then the total discount will be 5 percent for SBI card and then shipping is free and so on. We can design the decision table and that will help us generate the test cases. The cause effect graphs is a testing technique which just systematizes the decision table development. If we understand the problem well, we can easily generate the decision table, but uh, sometimes 
the cause effect graphs can help us generate the decision table easily. Here we have specific symbols for input and then uh, we represent that uh, the symbols in the form of output and then we develop the cause effect graph and then by looking at the cause effect graph it becomes easy to generate the decision table. Let us uh, look at one example and based on that we can see that cause effect graph is just a technique which helps us to develop the decision table and finally, the test cases are generated based on the decision table. But if we are able to generate the decision table without uh, using the cause effect graph then well and good, but uh, if we cannot really design the decision table then we can use the cause effect graph represent the causes and effects in the form of a graph and from that graph it becomes very easy to generate the decision table. Let us explain this technique using a simple example. Again we will take the case of depositing less than 1 lakh rate of interest is uh, 6 percent for 1 year, 7 percent for deposit 1 year to 3 year and 8 percent for 3 year and above. If deposit is uh, more than 1 lakh then 7 percent for up to 1 year, 8 percent for deposit over 1 year, but less than 3 year and 9 percent for deposits above 3 years. Now, we can write the causes which are the conditions basically and the corresponding effects. So, deposit is less than 1 year, deposit is between 1 to 3 year, deposit is greater than 3 year deposit is less than 1 lakh and deposit is greater than 1 lakh. So, these are the different conditions or causes and then we have the cor corresponding effect whether rate is 6 percent, 7 percent, 8 percent or 9 percent. Now, we represent that in the form of a graph. If you look here that C 1, C 2, C 3 are the duration of the deposit C 4, C 5 are the amount of deposit whether it is greater than 1 lakh or less than 1 lakh. C 4, C 5 this is whether the deposit is greater than 1 lakh or less than 1 lakh and C 1, C 2, C 3 are the duration. Now, if the deposit is less than 1 year and the amount deposited is less than 1 lakh then the rate of interest is 6 percent. If the deposit is for more than 1 year and the amount deposited is uh, more than uh, sorry less than 1 lakh then it is 7 percent and so on. So, this is the end condition we have represented here to indicate the fact that if both of these hold then this action takes place. And here for this we have a or condition represented here because if any of these holds for any of this, this action takes place. If we have a and here, then both of these takes place, then this will hold, but we have used a or here. So, cause effect graph is a very simple technique, which kind of helps in developing a decision table. Once we have got this, then developing the decision table becomes straightforward. We for form these conditions and these are the actions and then we look at this and form the different condition values of the conditions. So, this is the representation of a decision table. These are the actions, 
these are the conditions and different combinations of the conditions are easily identified from the cause effect graph. In the combinatorial testing so far we have discussed about the decision table based testing and we also saw that the cause effect graphing is a systematic technique which lets us develop a graph from the input problem description and the graph then can be easily translated into a decision table and uh, that helps us to generate the test cases because every row sorry every column will become a test case. In our subsequent discussion we look at the pairwise testing sometimes the number of conditions and the actions are too many. We were just discussing about the case of a equivalence partitioning and uh, boundary value testing. The number of parameters are too many which normally occurs in the case of uh, user interface and controller type of programs. Then the number of test cases can become too many. In that case, is there any way <coughs> we can reduce the number of test cases, but uh, still achieve as much uh, effective testing as either a robust testing or let us say decision based testing. Uh, we will discuss the pairwise testing which will help us to reduce the number of test cases substantially and still achieve good testing. So, that topic we will discuss in the next lecture is pairwise testing. Thank you.